Okay. Well, welcome to another Techie Books interview. Today we are interviewing Sherry Ramsey, um, author of the Near Space books, and the new one just came out. Where's my pointer? There it is. <laughs> Veiled in Distant Sky. Hello, Sherry. Hi, Raya. How you doing? Good. Um, okay, so let's do an overview of the series and then of this book as spoiler free as possible. Okay. Um, oh, you want me to do that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so near, the Near Space books are set about 250 years in our future. Um, we have uh, developed wormhole travel. So we have lots of other um, solar systems, uh, planets colonized. We have encountered a couple of species of aliens. And the main character in the first book and across the books is uh, Luda Pazon, who is a woman, when we first meet her, um, she's a woman in her 80s. However, she has not aged since she was around, not physically aged since she was around 30. And she doesn't know why. The only other person she knows who um, has a similar uh, problem, we'll call it, is her brother, Lanar. Um, so it seems like a nice problem to have, but I wanted to think about um, the downside. Like, what if your family all aged normally and you didn't? And yes. how would you handle that? And things like that. So much of the first book, she's basically trying to figure out why she is like that. Um, but over the course of the books, there are several um, storylines that sort of start and, and provide more of a story arc about things that are going on in near space, um, the corporations who are largely in, involved in the, uh, have largely been involved in the exploration and- uh, I'd also want to know why she doesn't age. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. She, she, she wants, yes. Yeah. They want to know too. Um, there's one in particular that thinks perhaps she has some proprietary technology of theirs in her body that uh, might be an explanation. So they're very keen to kind of get their hands on her. Um, I, I wanted to write each book so that it could stand alone, but that they also, there are also overarching themes yes. and ideas. So, yeah. And in the latest book? In the latest book, uh, the latest book is, it begins with the, uh, Luda and her crew discover a derelict vessel um, sending out a distress signal. Mm -hmm. And it quickly becomes apparent that there are um, things that are not normal about this vessel and its inhabitant who is extremely ill. Uh, and so they set out to sort of solve the mystery of that, find out what, um, where they have, this ship has come from. Um, uh, but there's also, I think in most of the books, there's a family element as well. Yes. And so uh, Luda's son and his wife um, happen to be on board uh, the ship for things that happen. Um, <laughs> and there are some personal issues at play too that uh get investigated over the course of the story well, it's hard to talk about without uh being spoiled Spoiling. well <laughs> you want to say enough to intrigue people to read it but you yeah. don't want to give away yeah you want exactly. them to read it yeah yeah <laughs> so it's been a while it's been a few years since the last book and this book Mm -hmm. What have you been doing in between? Um, you know, uh, surviving the pandemic. Well, I suppose that's true. But the pandemic <laughs> was only about half of that time. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, I did, I did have the first draft of this book pretty much completed um, pre-pandemic. But sort of looking back at it, when I was rereading it, um, when we were doing the final edits, I was like, wow, this is such a pandemic novel because there are, you know, there's themes of isolation and medical consent. And, and I was like, wow, I, maybe I was, you know, <laughs> peeking into the future a little bit. Um, I just didn't really know how. Um, I, I was, I mean, I, I have been working on this pretty steadily, although on and off. Uh, since the last 
since the last book in the series, Beyond the Sentinel Stars, came out. Um, the, the pandemic has been a very fallow time for me creatively. Um, I think creative people either got super creative and, <laughs> and wrote a ton and did all kinds of art and stuff, or their brains just shut down and went, I cannot be creative right now. And to a yeah. large extent, that was me. As far as writing goes, I always have a lot of creative things on the go. Um, not necessarily just writing, but the writing was, yeah, the writing was challenging. I did, I worked on a few things, but not a whole lot. I know a lot of people like that. Like even me, I play some musical instruments and I haven't played, touched anything during this yeah. entire yeah, it's a very strange phenomenon. Yeah. Uh, because at the beginning, I I sort of felt, wow, lockdown, we, we won't be doing anything else. Um, I'll get so much done. But no, I just wanted to like crochet and play video games and just divorce myself from, I don't know, anything that took a whole lot of effort, it seemed. I don't know. And what video games were we playing? Oh, I played Guild Wars 2. Okay. Uh, mainly that's my that's my go-to and and um others in my family play and my my sister who doesn't live right where i live uh she plays so we play a lot mm. uh, and, and talk over discord so it's sort of uh a nice way to keep in touch and uh escape reality <laughs> uh, <Yes>. yeah <laughs> is that what you're playing now um yeah yeah we were okay. playing last night actually oh okay <laughs> yeah I think when we did our um, when we did our uh, questions for the newsletter, I mentioned listening to a lot of video game music. Yes. Um, but it's usually games that the video game music that I like to listen to is usually games I don't play because then they don't have any other associations for me. So there it's it's kind of like I mean, I like to listen to music that doesn't have lyrics because yes. I don't want any interference with the words that I'm creating. And so it's, it's a little bit the same. I think I don't have, I, I mean, I listen to Assassin's Creed and I've watched my daughter play <laughs> Assassin's Creed, but I, I haven't played it myself. Uh, so I think it's, yeah, it's a little bit of a, not white noise, but a background with not too much else, you know, uh, suggesting itself to, to my mind while I'm listening to it. I see. Whereas I've played all the Assassin's Creed and I have the figurines for all of them. Yeah, including yeah. the movies too, which makes no right. sense because the movies weren't very good. But <laughs> the I, love the, I, I good. love the historical, yeah, of that series. I I just find it incredible. Well, I'm one of those ones that like I enjoy the newer Assassin's Creeds, but to me they're more RPGs, open world RPGs, and mm -hmm. the Assassin's Creed series didn't actually start that way. Right. Uh, and, and I miss how yeah. they were. I mean, I enjoy oh, the later ones because I enjoy out. RPGs. I, I play a lot of them, but I do miss how the original Assassin's Creed's were. Which probably makes no sense to you. Are you there? You froze. Sherry. Is this something on my end? Oh, oh now you're going. Oh, yeah, now you're back. <laughs> You were, you were completely frozen for me. You were frozen for me too. <laughs> okay. I was talking Assassin's Creed and da 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 da. <laughs> Which made so. no sense to you anyway, since you just said you didn't play the game, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like I said, I, I have watched. Yes. I have armchair played them, I guess. Yes, whereas I'm currently in my fourth playthrough of Yakuza Zero, because I play it every year. It's my favorite. Right. Yeah. Once a year, it's my comfort food. Right, yeah. Um, okay, so what does a writer read when she's not writing? Oh, um, I, read a, <laughs> I, I, I read a lot. Um, I read a lot in audiobooks over the past, since audiobooks became a thing, um, my reading has really ramped up because I like to, I love to listen to an audiobook when I'm doing all the mindless stuff that you know goes along with the glamorous writing life like um you know doing housework <laughs> and my husband yeah. likes to he he actually prefers doing the vacuuming in the house so that mm -hmm. he can put on his audiobook and yeah yeah it. anytime and I'm like you want to do the vacuuming sure yes yeah absolutely 
So anytime that I'm doing any of that kind of mindless stuff or working out in the yard in the summertime, um, I have an audiobook on the go. So I listen, I, I like, I mean, I, I like science fiction. I like fantasy, particularly urban fantasy. Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of mysteries. I listen to a lot of mysteries. Um, some thrillers, like, you know, it depends on what's on offer at my library. I listen to a lot of library audio oh, books. Okay. Um, so, yeah, a, a variety. I, the odd, you know, the odd historical or... Um, or, or nonfiction. Sometimes I, I like, I like a, science, a science type book. Mm -hmm. um, so you dabble in most things then? I do. I dabble in a lot of different genres. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds a lot like me. Mostly sci-fi and fantasy, but I read, you know, I'm open to a, a good book. Yeah, yeah. I honestly think if I, if I took a count, I'd probably read more mysteries than anything else. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that is also because... Um, they're ubiquitous. There's a there's a lot of yes of, of mysteries you could borrow from the library or or pick up on, um you know, on one of the subscription services. So yes, that's true. Yes, and your books are usually available through ebook through audio, but one's aspects or through ebook through the libraries, but one's aspects should be available through audio mm -hmm. through the libraries too. That's right. It should be. And then when we're off interview, we'll talk audiobooks. <laughs> um, okay. So in the last 10, 15 minutes, and we still have so much time to fill, we've discussed video games and we've discussed books. Yes. <laughs> and we did a little uh, bit of mute, touched a bit on music. <laughs> True. Oh, you know, I have, I do have another video game topic to go back to. Okay. Um, because it kind of ties, it, it ties in, um, in a funny way, uh, with the new book, oh, actually with the whole series, because um, for my last birthday, my daughters gave me uh, the game Metopia. Oh, yeah. So one of the, one of the first things you do, and one of the things you do a lot in the game is create characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, it occurred to me that it would be fun to create all the near space characters as <laughs> these in the game. And so uh, I, I, I've been working on that just as sort of a, just a fun thing to do. And I started posting them on my blog yesterday. Oh, really? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the aliens were quite challenging, <laughs> but they turned out so well. Um, like I'm, I'm so impressed with them um, because the game itself, it's like the, uh, the character creation tools are pretty, they're pretty basic in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, but you can really get creative with them. Okay. Um, so yes, everyone should go and check out my blog on my website because I have broken them up into, uh, I, well, I posted some yesterday, some today. I think I have enough to go for about three more days. Um, what is the link? What's that? What is the link to your website blog? Oh yeah, so my so my website is uh, just www.sherrydramsey.com. And it'll be um, in the YouTube notes. I'll yeah, put, and, I... and, the, and the blog is right on the first page, so it's easy to find. Anyway, if you have if you have read any of the books and you're familiar with the characters, uh, I think people might find it fun. Cool. Fun to create them. Cool. I'll have to check that out myself. Yeah. I haven't heard of Metopia. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. So it's it's a fantasy adventure game, um, but it's it's quite uh, it's quite humorous. It's, it's very light and funny. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's on Steam. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm on I my computer as we speak, so it's really well, easy to look. Yeah, yeah. Um, my Steam library is full of things I haven't played yet, um, but I, I have this on my Switch, so that's that's where I'm aware of it from. Yeah, I don't see it on Steam. No, probably. Yeah, my it's Steam probably... library, it used to be full of things I don't play, and I just had to stop doing that. So now I play a game because I'm a 
I don't know. A completionist isn't right because I don't go after all the little trophies and side things, but I do right. like to finish a game before I start another one. Wow, that's I admire that because I when I finish a game on Steam, I'm like, oh, I actually <sighs> finish a game. <laughs> no, my husband's what I call a dabbler. He plays. Yeah. He's finished the occasional game, and right now he's playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but he won't finish it because he never finishes. Right. I've never yeah. seen him finish a game. Well, I have once in a while. He finished um, Resident Evil 3 Remastered, but that's right. only because we were playing it at the exact same time. So, oh, yes. You yeah. Know, yeah. No, was... I'm, I'm with him. I'm a, I'm a dabbler also. Yeah. Whereas <laughs> I like to finish a game and especially like if you're playing rpgs then you know you're you're putting in 60 hours into these or more but i want to but i don't like i said i don't i don't get all the collectibles like i won't go after all the flags or after right. all the, i'll yeah. do a good chunk of the side stories i may not even do all of them but i'll i'll mm -hmm. still put in the good 60 hours in your rpg or your you know or the shorter games i do play shorter games too like death right. store was maybe only about 10 hours but mm -hmm. but yeah I like to because I want to know how it ends <laughs> right yeah yeah I guess I'm easily distracted by yeah. the next shiny thing <laughs> and it is tough there are so many shinies out there you know mm -hmm. steam's constantly like you know yeah. ghostfire tokyo's out okay yeah. I'll get yeah. to it yeah. you know and here's a sale <laughs> yeah the steam sales are just killer I know I know we don't schedule anything else when there's a on, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And that's what, about four times a year. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, uh, yes. Steam has a lot of my money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you listen to a lot of game music when you're writing. Mm -hmm. What kind of music do you listen to in general? In general? Um, really just like popular and sort of, I guess my kids have introduced me to a lot of sort of indie popular mm -hmm. music. Um, I don't tend to like, uh, things like classic music or oldies stations. <laughs> like my husband loves classic rock and I'm like, oh, I, I got tired of these songs when they were actually popular. <laughs> I don't want to listen to them anymore now. It's funny. <laughs> so yeah, whatever's whatever's out new, that's what that's what I like to listen to. Yeah. Is I dabble? I listen to new stuff. I like to listen to the new rock and metal more than pop. Right. But yeah, yeah. But I still listen to the new pop. I think it's. I, li I like to be able to dance. If, if if you can dance to it, then I like it. I mean, occasionally there's an older song that I that I did really like, and I'm like, ah. That's cool yeah. to hear that again, but I don't need to hear it again for another five years. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of video music channels here. And one just plays rock and the other just plays oldies. Right. <laughs> so yeah. if I'm on the video music channels, those are my choices. Right. Yeah. But the local radio station, because I don't live in a big, big city, it only has one radio station, mm -hmm. just plays generally newer, newer pop. Yeah. Yeah same here i don't i tend to listen to um i tend to listen to more cbc if i'm going to have the radio on it's usually cbc my husband's like that too yeah, yeah. so yeah. not for listen, music just for everything else. but usually it's only in the cars that we listen to the radio yeah. anyways because otherwise for me it's if i'm listening to something it's podcasts otherwise mm -hmm. i'm yeah. reading a book or if i'm working on the computer i'll put on um a music station and that's when I listen to music right yeah yes yes music is good background when you're dealing with spreadsheets when you're <laughs> dealing with royalties yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what do you do as a hobby wow as a hobby um as I said earlier I'm I do like to do a lot of creative things so you know I like to knit I like to crochet I, I dabble in art I'm certainly not an artist but um because like one of my daughters is 
really. Yeah, my daughter um, is too. Yeah. She went to an art school in college. Yeah. So yeah. So comparing myself to her, no, yeah. I wouldn't call myself an artist, but I enjoy um, you know, sketching and trying different things like that. Um in the summertime, it's mostly gardening. So my soul is yearning for those days right now. This has been a really long winter. Yeah, we got actually got a skiff of snow last night. So there's snow on the ground again. And I'm like, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I let my dogs out the other night and there were flurries. And I was like, no. <laughs> Although, I mean, for, for where I live, that's certainly not unusual. Same here, because we're right at the uh, mountains. So yeah, yeah. I shouldn't I shouldn't be surprised. There's just there's always a little part of you that's like maybe this year it'll be an <laughs> so early they, spring. Hope hope spring's eternal, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we don't remove our snow tires till the end of April. So no, same here. Yeah, it's, ours will be on for a while. Uh, oh well, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no. but sure. you can hope. You're like you can, there wasn't you can snow the hope. day before. <laughs> yeah. You can always hope, always hope. And being in the um, mountains here, it was like 15 degrees yesterday. And mm -hmm. now we have snow on the ground. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. This time of year, we will get a lot of fluctuations like that too. Uh, yep. One day it will be, you know, 12 or 15 and you'll be like, oh, wow, this is cool. And then the next day it's like minus six with the wind chill. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, back to what you asked, um, lots of creative, lots of creative kinds of outlets. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm never bored. <laughs> say that I'm never bored. <laughs> what are we watching right now? Um, well, now that's one thing I don't do a lot of. I don't watch a lot of, um, I don't watch a lot, a lot of TV, although um, my older daughter and I are completely addicted to Critical Role. Um, yes, yeah, my, so. my, hu my husband puts it on. I enjoy it when it's on because yeah, he'll yeah. put on YouTube on the TV and right. put it on. So, yeah, yes. yeah. So we, we make a point of always watching that. Um, honestly, that's the only thing I right now that I watch on a regular uh, basis. Although I always have a list of things that people have said, you should watch this. And I'm you like, should yeah, watch I'm Vincenzo. Really sure. You should watch. Yeah, yeah. You should watch this. You should watch. It. And 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 I always dutifully note it down. And then don't um, watch it. <laughs> never seem. I I never. I I guess I I rarely seem to be at that point. Like, um, well, what will I do this evening? Yeah. Oh, watch something. It it never really seems to happen like that. I don't know. I think I just got out of the habit years ago, and and then once you're out of the habit, you don't you you don't even think of it a lot. Yeah, I know my husband and I we watch about one hour, maybe an hour and a half in the evenings of TV, mm -hmm. and that's it. So right. we're not caught up on anything because if you watch an hour a night, <laughs> <laughs> forget it. Yeah, <laughs> that'll last you for the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. So so we'll we'll see shows like like we really really liked Vincenzo and always recommend it mm -hmm. but those are an hour and a half each and took their 20 episodes so it took us you know a month to get through it because we watched hours so we'd watch most of an episode one night <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah. and maybe I mean maybe that's it's sort of a side effect of, of watching Critical Role too because episodes might be yeah they're like four hours, hours long I <laughs> might know. be four and a half so once you've done that once you've watched that it's like well that's my Weeks worth TV. of TV. Yeah, that's my weeks worth of watching stuff. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I was watching um, Only Murders in the Building. We on. watched that. We yeah. enjoy, we just finished it yesterday, actually. Right. Just, I have. Just I think I have. It. I think I have two, two or three episodes left. I know my husband was upset, and I won't give any spoilers, but I I figured out who the murderer was. Right long before it was the second last episode when he twigged and I'm like really <laughs> but I do that to him all the time he gets into him right. and he doesn't you know and I'm like okay it's this person because I you know so I yeah so and I used to always say at the beginning or when I figured it out okay it's going to be this person and finally he just told me to just just stop I want to like <laughs> <laughs> well I think I think there are I think people watch things like that in, in two different ways. Now, some of us 
are trying to solve the mystery, right? We're like, ooh, mm-hmm. there's a clue. Oh, what do they mean by that? What could that, and other people are just, just enjoying it. They're yeah. just enjoying it as it is. And other people are, yeah, trying to figure it out, trying to jump ahead. Um, so yeah, when you get two of those people together, <laughs> they, don't, right. they don't want to hear your possible spoilers. <laughs> That's right. But, but it was, we really, it was deeper than we thought it would be. The, mm, the yeah. show, we thought it was, I mean, it's still light fluff, but there was more yeah, to it I than I but thought there was. There was more to it. Yeah. Yes. There were more undercurrents um, yeah. thematically yes. than you might have expected at first. Yeah. And the Sting cameo was just strange, actually. But <laughs> and yet it it fit somehow. It, did fit, it, it was yes. weirdly right. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> and that's as far as I'm going to say. If anyone wants to watch it, we don't want to give spoilers. No, but no, that's right. But Sting does make a cameo. But that mm-hmm. was yes, <laughs> yeah. And there were a lot of cameos, like there's Tina Fey's in, made mm-hmm. a cameo and mm-hmm. um, Nathan um, Lane yeah. is in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not super good at, at recognizing actors or knowing their names, but, but I'd be like, oh, I'm, well, obviously I'm just Sting. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but, um, but yeah, I'd be like, oh, I know that person, you know, they're from that thing. <laughs> <laughs> John's really good at faces. I'm better at names. So he'll go, I know who that is, but he's from this show. Right. You know, and I'll go, okay, do you mean, and I will say the name and he'll go, okay, sure. <laughs> oh, that's the perfect combination though. You've each got a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So you can put that, you can put it together. But IMDB on the iPad is our friend. Mm, yes. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We always have it beside us as we're watching something. It's like, hey, isn't that? Hey, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, whew, half an hour. It's a good hmm. start. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want this to be longer than an hour. So when we no. decide to end, we'll end. Sure. Um, is there? No, I asked you before the interview, and you said no. But I'm still going to ask you now. Sure. Anything you want to bring attention, like, do you have a favorite cause or do you have a favorite? Um, you mean, I'm all about animals, you know, so. Right, yeah. I, I yeah. donate to our local humane society. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've been, a, I've been a World Wildlife Fund supporter yeah. since, I, I can't even remember how long. But it's um, not like a passionate thing. It's just, oh, I support it. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Um, I did. Uh, I mean, I'm. I'm always concerned with what's going on in the world. I guess. Yeah, we won't so, touch too deeply on no, that. No, but but I find from time to time there will be something that uh, I will really get involved in. Yeah. But it but it really depends on what's happening and and what the context. Is. yeah uh, yes. so so i mean i might i might participate in like a writing challenge as a fundraiser or, or stuff like that mm-hmm. um or or donate you know donate books or whatever um but yeah it's it's not like yeah it is very it is very variable depending on yeah what's going on. yeah and right now it's the world's pretty tumultuous so we'll just uh, it really is <laughs> yeah but let's not talk about that <laughs> Can we talk about happier things? <laughs> yes, yes. Let's let's keep it let's keep it positive. <laughs> um. Okay. So if people want to stalk you, you gave yes. your website. But we'll do it again. And anywhere else that you want, that's public. Obviously, don't give any private Facebook or Twitter. But if you have <laughs> yeah. a public, yeah, I, I won't tell you how to get into my my like chat, family chat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Channel. What's your bank um, password? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so on Twitter and uh, actually Twitter and Instagram, I'm at S D Ramsey, um, and it's always Ramsey with an E Y, which everyone wants to spell it with an A Y, but oh, they want Ramsey instead of yeah, Ramsey. Yeah, yeah, and I think locally it's because um, I mean there's a there's a, 
a car dealership that is Ramsey. And um, there's a, I come from a, like in our area, there's a lot of uh, Scottish background and, and that usually tends to be Ramsey. So anyway, it is, it is with an E. I for can't me. talk to that because I have a name that everyone gets wrong. And right. I have a last name that everyone gets wrong. So yeah. I can't speak to that because it's no. not, the, none, neither are pronounced how they're spelled. So, right, right. <laughs> you can just empathize. That's all. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So SD um, Ram, at oh, SD Ramsey on, on Twitter and Instagram. I do have a Facebook page. Um, is it a public Shiri. one or a private yeah. one? Okay. Yeah, I have a I have an author page at okay. Shiri D. Ramsey author. Um, so you would find it that way. Um I I used to do a lot on I used to do a lot on Pinterest, but I haven't looked at it that much lately. Although I think I, a lot I, of people have gotten out of Pinterest. Yeah, it was I know. It, yeah. it sort of came and went and just left in its wake a really bad um search engine <laughs> yeah. mess up. <laughs> um, but I do have over a hundred uh, writing prompts, visual writing prompts on on a Pinterest board that are that are they're kind of fun um, if you're ever looking for writing prompts. Okay. Uh, so, that, but that was yeah, that was my flirtation with with Pinterest. <laughs> I think Taiki has a Pinterest page. I haven't been on it in a while. I don't even know if Margaret keeps it up or not. Right. But it's, it's you know. Yeah, what I uh, what I honestly used Pinterest the most for was um, secret boards that only I could see. Oh, but okay. when I, when, like anytime I was working, anytime I'm working on a book, I make a secret board. And, and so that's a great place to stash like any visuals that I find um, that I'm like, oh, that's kind of inspirational for this or um, just ideas, story ideas, things like that. So I do tend to use it sort of as a almost as a, a filing cabinet. Oh, okay. like that um but yeah not, not so much for anything else anymore i don't know what i don't know why it waned yeah i don't know i mean everything has its fad yeah it's the nature you know, of the internet everything. i know that they're pushing all this meta and in life thing and i'm like isn't that just basically second life that yeah. used to be a fad and now you're just trying to bring it back just with yeah. better graphics yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still I still do have a writing group that meets. I belong to a writing group that meets in Second Life. Oh really? Um, yeah, yeah. Every every week. Um, but that's like the only thing I do in Second Life now. I just go go to the meeting. Yeah. So so yeah, but that sounds to me what the latest meta thing is. Everyone's mm -hmm. like, haven't we done this already? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, we're always, I guess we're always reinventing. That's true. In the hopes that it will be bigger and better and, I don't know, and stick better, maybe. <laughs> and stick better. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. It's hard to say. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do much research when you're writing or? Well, it really depends on, yeah, it really depends on what I'm writing, but I, yeah, I guess. I guess I do look up quite a number of things, although they, they're not necessarily always um, major. Research. Yeah, because yeah, you don't do hard sci-fi, you do light, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I was, so when I was starting the Near Space series, um, I did research into, into wormholes and, uh, you know, working out the, the travel stuff mm -hmm. so that it would be realistic enough mm -hmm. for, right because I, I do like science fiction that is is based in science and that you can sort of see the extrapolation yes um and so so that kind of thing I always do research if I'm creating a, a, a like a, an inhabited planet because I, I want I want those scientific things to be right mm -hmm. um but other than that it's like you know you're writing something alternate history and you you know you just want to check on the, a little fact that kind of thing I, I find I do a lot so so if I'm when I'm working on a project I always have a lot of tabs open in my browser <laughs> <laughs> I'm very bad at bookmarking I would much rather just leave 52 tabs open <laughs> so I can find the thing that I want whenever I need it um 
so yeah, not a lot of heavy research, but it does depend on the it does depend on the topic. Okay. That's what I'm writing about. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can probably call it there. It's been 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if there's anything you want to add. Um, um well, you know go go check out my new book <laughs> well definitely check out the books no, we've got the uh, new one the veiled and distant sky yeah either side yeah. of me here yeah they and look then, so they look so good all together there yes it's very, it's very nice yes um, and i love the cover okay. artwork for all of them i think i think um, it's been really nice to have the same artist do the covers yes for all of them it's, it's, ashley it's, it's, walters yeah yeah, okay. They definitely do. They definitely do tie all tie together. So they do, and they're nice. I like the colors myself. Yeah, me too. It's my it's my favorite kind of color scheme. So well, then we will wish you a good day. Okay. Well, thanks. This has been fun. Thank you. Now I have to go make a birthday cake. So. <laughs>